Hello dear students, I welcome you all for our lecture series on agrochemicals and pest control. Today in this episode, the topic that we are going to talk about is organophosphorus pesticides. Distribution of pesticides in the environment is increasing because of increasing use in agriculture, forestry and domestic activities for controlling pests and weeds. These pesticides are contained in urban or agricultural runoff and flow into the sewer system by wet and dry deposition from the atmosphere or flow into wastewater treatment plants directly via the contribution of industrial discharges. These chemicals are applied to crops, buildings, ornamental plants and lawns. Agricultural uses include field applications on corn, cotton, canola, alfalfa and nuts. So today's topic we can study in the following five subgroups. They are characteristics of organophosphorus pesticides, the government regulation, a common mechanism of action, organophosphate toxicity and disadvantage of organophosphate insecticides. Start with the first module that is characteristics of organophosphorus pesticides. Organophosphorus pesticides or phosphate esters comprising a central phosphate atom and three organic side chains, two of which are usually ethyl or methyl and one of which is more specific for a given pesticide. Most organophosphorus pesticides registered for use in the United States are used as insecticides. In 1999, 60 million pounds of organophosphorus pesticides were used in agriculture and about 70 million pounds were used in non-agricultural applications. As many of the first generation organochlorine pesticides were banned in the 1970s, the agrochemical industry turned to the less persistent but more acutely toxic organophosphate and carbamate compounds to control insect pests. Use of these pesticides increased rapidly and by the late 1980s about 65% of insecticides applied nationwide were organophosphorus and carbamate compounds. Use has increased slightly since then to about 70% of total insecticide use. Organophosphate pesticides are synthetic in origin and are normally esters, amides or thiol derivatives of phosphoric, phosphonic, phosphorothioic or phosphonothioic acids. Actually, organophosphates are esters of phosphoric acid. They are formed by the esterification of phosphoric acid by the attachment of organic groups to phosphorus through oxygen linkers. Phosphoric acid is a triprotic acid, therefore it forms triesters during its esterification. Over 100 organophosphorus compounds representing a variety of chemical, physical and biological properties are presently in commercial use. Most are only slightly soluble in water and have a high oil water partition coefficient and a low vapor pressure. Most with the exception of dichlorovose are of comparatively low volatility and are all degraded by hydrolysis yielding water soluble products. Powder, granular and water based products will not burn. Most liquid formulations will burn and are miscible with water. 
the products of combustion may be harmful by inhalation and dermal contamination. Fire service personnel should extinguish fires with alcohol resistant foam, water spray or dry powder. Firefighters should wear full protective clothing including self-contained breathing apparatus. Now let us concentrate on the government regulations on the organophosphorus pesticides. In response to the Food Quality Protection Act of 1996, the US EPA began a process of re-registering pesticide active ingredients using a new set of standards that are more protective of public health than those used before 1996. One result is the requirement that combined exposure to pesticides with a common mechanism of toxicity be concerned. Unfortunately, there is still no mechanism to evaluate the effects of the many simultaneous exposures to different groups of chemicals people experience every day. The good news is that new restrictions have been imposed on most pesticides evaluated under the law. Some uses such as residential uses of diazinone and chloropyrifos are being phased out altogether because of the unacceptable risk posed to children from their use. The bad news is that the process is slow, so many high use chemicals have yet to be evaluated. And unfortunately, the risks to agriculture workers are often simply overlooked. EPA has also not followed the letter of the law in its work, failing to fully assess the risks from all routes of exposure and failing to include additional safety factors for children that are required under the 1996 law. Industry's attempts to delay enforcement of the law were successfully blocked by the lawsuit field by the Natural Resources Defense Council, Pesticide Action Network, Breast Cancer Fund, United Farm Workers and Physicians for Social Responsibility. The settlement of the lawsuit in 2001 puts EPA on a strict timeline to finish the work for many high-use chemicals. The agency will be pressured to make some hard decisions in the next several years as the data come in. If the law is properly implemented, we may see significant new restrictions and reductions in organophosphorus pesticide use. Now let us study the mechanism of action of organophosphorus pesticides. Organophosphate compounds are a diverse group of chemicals used in both domestic and industrial settings. Examples of organophosphates include insecticides, nerve gases, ophthalmic agents and antihelminthetics. Herbicides are trichrysyl phosphate containing industrial chemicals. Organophosphate compounds were first synthesized in the early 1800s when Lysenhe reacted alcohol with phosphoric acid. Shortly thereafter, in 1854, Philip D. Charmout described the synthesis of tetraethyl pyrophosphate at a meeting of the French Academy of Sciences. 80 years later, Langer in Berlin and Schrader, a chemist at Bayer AG, Germany, investigated the use of organophosphates as insecticides. However, the German military prevented the use of organophosphates as insecticides and instead developed an arsenal of chemical warfare agents. 
During World War II in 1941, organophosphates were reintroduced worldwide for pesticide use as originally intended. Massive organophosphate intoxication from suicidal and accidental events such as the Jamaica ginger palsy incident in 1930 led to the discovery of the mechanism of action of organophosphates. Nerve agents have also been used in battle, notably in Iraq in the 1980s. Additionally, chemical weapons still pose a very real concern in this age of terrorist activity. Exposure to organophosphates is also possible via intentional or unintentional contamination of food sources. Although no clinical effects of chronic low level organophosphates exposure from a food source have been shown. Advancements in risk assessment and awareness are ongoing. Coming to pathophysiology. The primary mechanism of action of organophosphate pesticides is inhibition of carboxyl ester hydrolases, particularly acetylcholine esterase. Acetylcholine esterase is an enzyme that degrades the neurotransmitter acetylcholine into choline and acetic acid. Acetylcholine is found in the central and peripheral nervous system, neuromuscular junctions and red blood cells. Organophosphates inactivate acetylcholine esterase by phosphorylating the serine hydroxyl group located at the active site of acetylcholine esterase. The phosphorylation occurs by loss of an organophosphate leaving group and establishment of a covalent bond with acetylcholine esterase. Once acetylcholine esterase has been inactivated, acetylcholine accumulates throughout the nervous system resulting in overstimulation of muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. Clinical effects are manifested via activation of the autonomic and central nervous systems and at nicotinic receptors on skeletal muscle. Once an organophosphate binds to acetylcholine esterase, the enzyme can undergo endogenous hydrolysis of the phosphorylated enzyme by esterases or paraxonesis or reactivation by a strong nucleophile such as or it may undergo irreversible binding and permanent enzyme inactivation that is aging. Organophosphates can be absorbed cutaneously, ingested, inhaled or injected. Although most patients rapidly become symptomatic, the onset and severity of symptoms depend on the specific compound, amount, route of exposure and rate of metabolic degradation. After the mechanism, now we shall move on to the toxicity part. Organophosphate compounds include some of the most toxic chemicals used in agriculture. Included in the organophosphate group are disulfoton, folate, dimethoate, seodrin, dichlorose, dioxithion, reulin, carbophenothion, supona, parathion, malathion, ronel, diazinone, dichlorophon, paragron, potassium, demifox, mipofox, scradin, savin, chloropyrifos and dimeton. These insecticides are esters, amides or simple derivatives of phosphoric 
and triphosphoric acids. Some of the less toxic compounds are used as systemic insecticides and animals against internal and external parasites. These include chlorthione, dichlorophon, diazinone, fenchlorophos and dichlorvos. The organophosphate insecticides can be grouped according to their toxic action on insects. Malathion, paraxion, parathion and potassium have an action similar to chlorinated hydrocarbons and act as contact poisons, while others such as demifox, mipafox and scradin are selective systemic insecticides which are absorbed into the plant sap and remain active for long periods of time. Selective systemic organophosphate insecticides are toxic to plant pests but not to their predators. Coming to transmission and development. Organophosphate toxicity is due to the ability of these compounds to inhibit acetylcholine esterase at cholinergic junctions of the nervous system. These junctions include postganglionic, parasympathetic, neuroaffectar junctions, autonomic ganglia and neuromuscular junctions and certain synapses in the central nervous system. Acetylcholine is the neurohumoral mediator at these junctions. Since acetylcholine esterase is the enzyme that degrades acetylcholine following stimulation of a nerve, its inhibition allows acetylcholine to accumulate and result in initial excessive stimulation followed by depression. Some compounds have a direct effect on the inhibition of acetylcholine esterase while others such as parathion are converted in the liver to metabolites which inhibit acetylcholine esterase. In addition to the anti-acetylcholine esterase activity of these compounds, HETP has carcinogenic activity and mypofox causes demyelination in peripheral nerves causing lesions which resemble those due to thiamine deficiency. Many of these compounds are excreted in milk and are able to cross placental membranes causing toxicity in offspring. Organophosphate compounds vary greatly in their toxic capabilities and have the advantage over other types of insecticides in that they produce little or no tissue residues. All have a cumulative effect with chronic exposure causing progressive inhibition of choline esterase. Liquid organophosphates are absorbed readily by all roots, although malathion, which is the least toxic of these chemicals, is only slightly absorbed through the skin. Coming to clinical signs, acute signs can result within 1 to 12 hours following inhalation or cutaneous absorption and more rapidly following ingestion. The clinical signs of organophosphate poisoning occurs as a result of excess acetylcholine at nerve endings which mimics hyperactivity of parasympathetic nervous system. Signs relative to the elementary tract include excess salivation, lacrimation, abdominal pain, vomiting, intestinal hypermotility and diarrhea. The muscarinic effects of acetylcholine cause bronchoconstriction and an increase in bronchial secretions. The nicotinic effects of acetylcholine consist of involuntary irregular violent muscles contractions and weakness of voluntary muscles. Death occurs as a result of respiratory failure. Clinically affected animals may lose weight 
due to the inability to feed and drink because of muscular weakness. Clinical signs in birds include goose stepping, ataxia, wing droop, dry area, salivation, lacrimation, ptosis of the eyelids and wing beat convulsions. Non-fatal cases usually recover within 48 hours. Susceptibility to organophosphate toxicity varies greatly among individuals of any species and can be increased by frequent repeated mild exposure which results in greater susceptibility due to collapse of the body store of choline esteries. No definite post-mortem changes are seen and when present are usually secondary to the symptoms and include pulmonary oedema, gastroenteritis and rarely kidney and liver degeneration. As post-mortem findings are usually not revealing, diagnosis is usually made by laboratory analysis. The most reliable diagnostic test is the determination of the acetylcholine esterase level in the red blood cells, but it must be performed on fresh samples. Acetylcholine esterase levels can be determined on red blood cells, whole blood or plasma. The analysis which is usually used in the detection of organophosphate degradation products in the stomach contents and liver and kidney tissue. Analysis of brain tissue for decreased acetylcholine esterase levels is also good if done within a few days following death. If organophosphate toxicity is diagnosed, treatment with atropine and 2-pyrimidine aldoxin methodiode can elevate some of the symptoms. Decontamination of the skin, stomach and eyes of the animal may be necessary along with the symptomatic treatment and respiratory support. Precautions should be taken to prevent drift or drainage of organophosphates to adjoining fields, pastures, ponds, streams or other premises outside the treated area. Occasional organophosphate poisonings are seen in Michigan wildlife following exposure to recently treated areas. Diazinone intoxication in Canada geese, mallard ducks and wild turkeys is the most common organophosphate poisoning seen. Parathion poisoning in ring-billed gulls and disulfotone intoxication in a mallard, seven poisoning in bees and Chlorpyrifos poisoning in a mallard have occurred as the use of organophosphates has increased. These deaths are usually sporadic and infrequent in occurrence. As with any pesticide, precautions need to be taken to prevent human exposure and subsequent poisoning. Next, disadvantages of organophosphate insecticide in that we have hazard characteristics. The majority of the organophosphorus pesticides are liquid and have different vapor pressures at room temperature. The compounds used for agriculture purposes are available mainly as emulsifiable concentrates or wettable powder formulations for reconstruction as liquid sprays, but also as granules for soil applications. A limited number are also available as fogging formulations, smokes, impregnated resin strips for use indoors and as animal or human pharmaceutical preparations. All organophosphorus pesticides are subject to degradation by hydrolysis yielding water soluble products that are believed to be 
non toxic at all practical concentrations the toxic hazard is therefore essentially short term in contrast to that of the persistent organochlorine pesticides although the half life at neutral ph may vary from a few hours for dichlorose to several weeks for parathion at the ph of slightly acidic soils these half lives will be extended many times however constituents of soil and of river water may themselves catalyze degradation organophosphates are used in various industries as solvents plasticizers and ep additives they are very harmful for animals and humans they are very toxic and likely to cause several effects including death they are a potent nerve agent and can inhibit the action of acetylcholine esterase present in nerve cells unfortunately they are often used for suicides in agricultural areas the other bad effects of these insecticides comes with chronic exposure which kills 3 lakh people every year usually poorer people living near chemical factories coming to environmental risks three routes of entry into water sources are possible one is from industrial waste or effluent discharge directly into water a second is by seepage from buried toxic waste into water supplies neither of these should be tolerated since prior treatment of the waste with alkali followed by neutralization can destroy the toxic agents thirdly contamination of running water directly or from runoff during spraying operations can occur no studies on the degradation of organophosphorus pesticides in running water have been reported in static water in a simulated aquatic environment there is evidence that light suspended particles and bacteria contribute to degradation thus the degradation of phenytrotione in lake water under illumination occurred with a half life of about 2 days compared with 50 days in the dark furthermore drevenker and co-workers concluded that although temperature and ph were major factors controlling the rate of hydrolysis of dichlorose in water large differences in the half life of this pesticide is different river waters must be attributed to microbiological factors degradation in the environmental involves both hydrolysis and oxidation to mono are di substituted phosphoric or phosphonic acids or their thio analogs there is no evidence that these products are toxic to any significant extent so now it's time to conclude our session to conclude i can say that by the late 1970s the use of organophosphates began to overtake the organochlorine insecticides which include ddt while organochlorines were relatively safe to use their problems were persistence in the environment and detection in the human food chain organophosphates on the other hand are more acutely toxic but do not persist in the environment beyond a few months so with a switch from organochlorines to organophosphates it can be assumed that the consumer has benefited at the expense of the pesticide operator so students i hope you got some information about this topic thank you so much for watching this session hope we will meet in the future episode until then take good care of yourself thank you